Welcome to eTeacher Pakistan webinar series. eTeacher Pakistan webinar series is an initiative of the eTeacher Plus for Pakistan program. The eTeacher program provides professional development opportunities to English language teachers and learners from across Pakistan. These opportunities are provided through global online courses, massive open online courses, webinar series, and then engaging the alumni into lots of amazing alumni engagement activities. The program is fully funded by the Regional English Language Office at the U.S. Embassy Islamabad. In Pakistan, it is implemented by Evolution. If you wish to stay updated with the developments under the eTeacher Plus for Pakistan program, please follow Relo Pakistan on Facebook and please subscribe to their YouTube channel. If you wish to gain more specific information about the eTeacher program uh, components, please visit www.evolution.com.pk slash eTeacher. Today, as a part of eTeacher Pakistan webinar series 2.10, we will be talking about reading components. To present on this topic, we have with us today Muhammad Yunus, who is a subject specialist of English. He has earned his MPhil in English linguistics. He is a passionate teacher who has a lot of professional development on his portfolio. He has also done his uh, diploma in TEFL from Alama Iqbal Open University in Islamabad. He is alumnus of the Relo programming under which he has completed EFL assessment from UMBC and also advanced certificate of English language teaching from University of Oregon. We are very much happy to have Yunus today to present on reading skills. Hey everybody. I'm very grateful to the Relo office for having me such a, for such a wonderful webinar. The topic of today's webinar is reading skill and its components. You know, there are four language skills, reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Reading and listening are receptive skills. Because of whenever you read any text, blogs, or newspaper or anything, you get some information. So that's why it's receptive. You receive some information. And same is the case with the listening skill. But I'm very sorry to say the way we teach the reading skill is quite traditional. Most of the teachers use the grammar translation method while teaching the reading skills. They have no idea what sort of strategies, techniques are helpful and boosting up the reading skill of students. So this webinar is quite helpful in this concern. So let's have a go and talk about the reading components. There are five reading components. The first one is phonemic awareness. The second one is phonics. The third one is vocabulary. The fourth one is fluency. And fifth one is comprehension. Now let's talk each components individually and the activities which are helpful and boosting up in developing these components to approach their comprehension level of reading skill. The very first is phonemic awareness. Before talking about the phonemic awareness, let me define the word phoneme. Phoneme is actually the smallest minimal units making up the spoken language. Phonemes combine to form a syllables and words. Phonemic awareness is actually basically the sound word knowledge. So that's why it's aimed on auditory understanding as opposed to word on the page. And phonemic awareness, student hear a sound, identify it and manipulate it to, to arrange, to create new words. According to the national reading panels, Phonemic awareness plays a significant role in developing the reading skills. So let's talk about activities which are helpful in developing the phonemic awareness. The very first activity is to develop a kinesthetic awareness of sound. In kinesthetic awareness of sound, the teacher teach the student 
how to pronounce the word, how to pronounce the word, and what the manners we can, you know, articulate the sound. I mean, in a kinesthetic awareness sound, we tell them the place of articulation and the, and the manner of articulation. For example, if I say, say word phoneme P. So now I can pose the question, what is your mouth doing? Definitely, they will think already that which part of mouth is, you know, uh, taking part in, uh, in, in pronouncing or articulating the word phoneme P. The next question could be, what do your lips do? Means lips are joining together or they are separating apart. Can you feel air coming out or not? I mean there is a stop in air a little bit closer or air coming out abruptly or slowly, so on. Now you can teach them another volume like butt sound. So you can ask the student what is the same between the pa sound and ba sound? So definitely they will tell the difference whenever they articulate the both sound, they will tell the difference that which part of the mouth is active while pronouncing the pa sound and while pronouncing the pa sound. You can ask them what is the difference between pronouncing these words. The next question could be place your hand on the throat. What do you feel? I mean, do you feel any vibration? The sound is voiced or voiceless. So this way we can develop the kind of static awareness of sound. The next activity is phonemic isolation. In this, in this activity, students are supposed to identify the individual phoneme in the words. For example, if I give them a word like boat, they have to identify the first phoneme and that is definitely the P. You can also ask them to identify the middle phonemes or the last phoneme. The next activity is phoneme identity. And phoneme identity student identify the common sound in different words. For example, here I have three words, bike, boy, and bad. Now students are supposed to identify the same phoneme in these three words. And obviously that is birth sound, birth, okay? You can devise this activity in other way, like you can tell them that you can give them words and ask them to identify uh, the common middle sound or common final sound. The next is phoneme category. And this activity is to identify the words which that's uh, that have a odd sound in the sequence. That is a little bit different from other sound. For example, here I have three words, bus, ban, and rock. Now you can see when they will pronounce the word or articulate, uh, they, they will come across that. The, the last sound is a little bit different from the uh, first two one, bus and ban. So in this way, they can differentiate between the different phonemes, the different sounds, uh, the sound which is a bit, uh, you know, dissimilar from the others. The next activity is phoneme blending. So actually the blending means to bring all phonemes together to make a word. So in this, you have supposed, the teacher has, you know, just give them a phoneme and they are supposed to combine all phonemes together to make word. For example, if they give them a word, ka, ka, a, t, three phoneme, uh, students are supposed to combine these phonemes together to make word cat. Schools. Here's an in word school, there are four phonemes. Now, student will bring all phonemes together to make a word school. Phonemic blending may be one syllable, it may be two syllable, or it may be three syllable words. In one syllable, for example, school, car, cop, cat, or like that. And two and two syllabic word that may be basket, carpet, and so on. And three syllabic if students are a bit comfortable in, you know, in, in articulating or pronouncing or blending 
uh, the f one syllable word or two syllable word, they can blend the three syllable word as well, like beautiful. That's a bit, you know, difficult for the beginner, for the student who are at the lower grade. But if, uh, as they go on, as they progress, they feel comfortable to pronouncing, uh, to, uh, you know, the blending the three syllable word as well. The next is phoneme deletion. In phoneme deletion, uh, student have to delete the specified phoneme and the re and then just uh, pronounce or articulate the remaining word. For example, the word smile, they, the specified phoneme is s. Now they have to remove the s, mean the letter s, the sound phoneme s, the uh, remaining word will be mine. So uh, this way uh, they can, you know, uh, improve their phonemic awareness. You can do this activity like this way as well. It just ask them to uh, remove the first phoneme and add another phoneme in place of first one and make the word. For example, the word card. Now they are supposed to remove the word k phoneme. They are removed to phoneme k and put another phoneme p and that will make another word part. So this way they can develop their phonemic awareness. The last one is rhyme one syllable word and rhymes one syllable word uh, you just ask them you just give them a word and they are supposed to make a rhyming word of that very sign word as they came for example the word card they are supposed to make the rhyming word of card smart and part and so on the next the second component is phonics basically the phonics is the connection between of different sound with letters or different grouping of letters. So for, for example, the letter S and its sound is but adding, this is only, you know, one letter. Similarly, the uh, word C sound K. So word B, letter B, sorry, and sound P. Letter P, the sound P. So this is a connection. And grouping of letter mean whenever you bring uh, another word with the phoneme, with the letter, for example, the word S, now you are going to attach the word H. Now there are two letters, SH, but have a single sound like SH. SH gives you a single sound, SH. For example, as in word shape, sheep, or shape. So phone phonics is basically the connection between the letter, a grouping of letter and their sound. Phonics instruction, you know, play a very important role to read and spell the word. That's very important. And it's totally, you know, it's a connection between the arbitrary symbols that are on the page to the spoken language, individual spoken language. So let's talk about the activities which are fruitful in developing the phonics the first one is rhyme game. Yeah, it's a very important. An activity that's requires student to rhyme, that's develop their phonic understanding. You may ask them to, uh, you know, choose any poem from your the book and find out the for, uh, rhyming word at the end of the verse. Or you can give them different rhyming words and ask them to match or mix them together. The next is flexi word. Flexi word is basically the brain thinking game. You can search or Google on internet, but in class you can give them in a very easy way. Uh, for this, you have to, uh, you must have a decorated uh, piece of card of phonemes. Then you ask them, uh, ask the student to attach each phoneme with elastic band and stretch it out, stretch out the band and sound out each phoneme individually. And then you can ask that relax the elastic band and the word will appear in a regular speech and they will sound it again. So it means that they are guessing the word. First they uh, read it separately in phonemes and then bringing it together in a word. So this is the flexi word game. Phonic hopscotch is another very interesting. You can just Google it or search it in a YouTube as well. Actually, the hopscotch is, you know, uh, 
sort of spaces, a rectangular sort of a square or a triangle sort of spaces that are outlined on the ground and students are supposed to hop or jump through those spaces. For example, in phonetic awareness, for info, uh, teaching the phonics, just I keep giving them the word cat. So, you know, that in word cat, there are three phonemes, ka, a, t. Now, student will keep each phonemes in a single space and jump through those spaces. First, they will hop or jump in space where the phonemes k, then a, and then ta mean the student will jump thrice to uh, sound out the word cat ka uh, ta. You can ask them to bring all these things together and pronounce uh, at once like cat cat. So this is phonic hopscotch. Guess the word. In guessing the word, write down a few words and place in the middle of table. Now just give them the clue that pick up the word with ending ing sound, with beginning bus sound, with middle, uh, any other sound. So definitely they will think over it and pick up the word that's ending with ing sound or beginning with bus sound or beginning with pa sound. So that's why these activities go on. The next is word mix up. Put individual graphemes on separate card, and then ask student with manipulating them to create as many words as they can. Vocabulary. Vocabulary is very important, you know, and reading skill. If the student have strong vocabulary, they may be able to tackle some time unfamiliar sort of challenging sort of the text as well. So what's basically vocabulary is? So here is a definition. Vocabulary is a range of words a student is able to understand and use in context. A student can understand and use in context that is and vocabulary, otherwise not. For example, student know the colors, name of all colors, but he can judge the difference between black and white and can use in the context as well. So this is not in vocabulary. The cow is very important for vocabulary that, in, that he may understand the word and also use in context. That's in vocabulary. So here are a lot of activities that are fruitful for developing the vocabulary of your student. The first one is word of the day. And word of the day just create a daily roster for the students uh, for the unfamiliar, undiscovered, or unusual word they come across. Now you can ask them to explain the original definition, act it out if possible. For example, run, they can run, you know, jumping, they can jump or like that. And ask them to compile the synonyms of that very word. This will improve their vocabulary. The next is creating, creative writing. Compile all the words of day gather over the week and then ask the student to write a story or essay or anything else. Now the student know the word and they will use in different contexts. So this will enhance their vocabulary and this activity also improves their creating skill as a writing skill as well. The next is class glossary. Yeah, very important. You know students are compiling a you know a small sort of dictionary in class glossary so whenever students come across the unfamiliar word assign them to the students while reading any topic just ask them to write the definition pronunciation guide you know after after uh, reading after you know understanding the phonics and phonemic awareness they will be able to write the phone pronunciation guide as well and then ask them to write a sentence, an image if you know possible, to re present that very word. That will be a small sort of the dictionary for the students, and they will it's boost up their you know their vocabulary in different way. 
in the all aspect of the word like they know the definition they know the pronunciation and they know how to use in different contexts opposite attract this is very important activity assign each student a car with a new word and its definition now you are supposed to ask them uh, to find out the opposite meaning the antonyms of that very word so they know that by this activity they will be able to know the synonyms as well as antonyms of that very word next is book vo vocabulary bookmark have student design and create a bookmark with a space to write down any new word they discover while they read now laminate uh, laminate them so student can reuse them with a dry erase marker We can see uh, this is the fourth one components most of the people think that fluency means to read a text with a speed but this is not the case actually the fluency is ability to read with speed and understanding in accuracy if the students are just reading with speed having no proper pronunciation not understanding the text what is going on and more reading accurately that's not the fluency for fluency you must keep three things, speed, understanding, and accuracy. So here are activities for improving the fluency. Teacher morning. Teacher must, you know, make its habit to read a lesson or text daily uh, read uh, in the classroom. Teacher must read it aloud in front of student. But keep in mind that while reading it aloud, it should be, be expressive, it should be very his pace, mean read with intonation, the sound with the sound ups and down. So that will improve the fluency of the student because student always try to imitate and copy his teacher. So the way the teacher is reading the text, student will try. The next is phrase identification. And phrase identification, just take a single sentence, read it uh, uh, aloud, while student just refer to the written version or text. Now ask them to identify the distinct phrase with an underline by listening carefully to the pauses. I mean, the teacher will read that very phrase with uh, a sentence and with the pauses. So they will know the, you know, distinct sort of, they will pick up their distinct phrase and then identify it. Choral reading, read a story text aloud to your student. This is another activity. Short text means just take a short text and read it aloud. And they have them read it's in June, it's and mean with the rhythm, with the proper flow, with intonations. Match the flow and pace of the group, develop fluency matching. If there is the flow is and the pace is not matching, that will create a distraction uh, while reading together. Peer reading. Peer reading have children read aloud to one another encourage them to develop the expression and flow needed for fluency you know the last one is audio books you know it's air of internet and you can find out so many uh, material that is available on internet and you can find so many audio books so by listening the audio books and having the text of that very uh, you know, book as well will improve and enhance and develop, boost up their fluency. The very last one is comprehension. Comprehension is actually ability to process the text, understand its meaning, and to integrate with what the reader already knows. Okay, so comprehension is ultimate goal of the reading and if students have no, no comprehension of text you know the reading is useless it's not fruitful it's have no conclusions 
it's baseless. Keep in mind that all four of the components, phonemic awareness, phonics, vocabulary, and fluency, that's help in comprehension, in, in comprehending the text in a better way. So let's talk about the activities which are helpful in comprehension the text. Use prior knowledge, mean the background knowledge. Whenever you teach, uh, read any text, you must evoke your background knowledge, your prior knowledge, and interlink with that very text. That will improve your you know, comprehension. Predicting mean to predict something, what will happen next, or what, what is expecting, what is what do you expect from this lesson? Where do you, you know, in, uh, in the beginning of each lesson, there are a few questions that evokes your pre prior knowledge or background knowledge. And now you can ask the student, what do you think what the lesson is about? What the story is about? How the character is, uh, character look like or that one. So when uh, students make prediction about the text, they are about to read. It step up the expect uh, expectation based on their private knowledge about similar topic. Okay, as they read, they may mentally revise their prediction as they gain more information. Identifying the main idea and summarization. So mean identifying the main idea. What's the theme of text? And what's summary of that very topic? that will enhance their comprehension because they are putting the nutshell of that very text. They are coming to conclusion um, means they can, uh, they, can, uh, they can, you know, describe the lesson in a few lines and a short summary. So this will enhance their vocabulary, sorry, comprehension. The questioning, asking and answering the question about text is in other strategies that help the student to focus on meaning of text. But keep in mind that while posing the question and ask the question, teacher must ask the open-ended questions, you know, not the close ending question that have the answer in yes and no. And one thing that's most of the people, most of the student feeling shy to answer the question or ask the question in the classroom. So teacher must model them, help them, in process of ask, asking good question and strategies for finding answer in the text. Making inference, making connection, in order to make inference about something that is not explicitly stated in text, the things which is not in, written in the text. So inference help their comprehension level. For example, in narrative, uh, skills or reading or any story, you can ask about the characters, you can ask about the setting. For character, you can say, what do you think that the characters, uh, the behavior of the character, the manner as it treated in the drama or story was good or bad? Uh, what do you think about the setting? So you can pose a different sort of question that are not, you know, uh, uh, stated in the text. You can ask what's the beginning, what's the climax, or what's the ending of this story? What, what lesson do you derive from this text? So this will improve their comprehension. So here are a few activities, but same is there. The last one, make it a habit, reading a habit. So this is very wonderful. Whenever you make the reading as a habit, you will improve your reading skills, reading comprehension. You will come across a new vocabulary and the different format of, you know, uh, uh, reading scripts, reading transcript. You come across the area that you come across different informations. So that will helpful, uh, you know, in, in, in understanding the text in a very real way. So these are all the components that are very helpful and building the reading skills. So this is from my side. If you have any questions, just comment below the box. Uh, I will try to answer, uh, inshallah. 
So here is another link. If you have any questions, you can just go to the eTeacher at the rate of evolution.com.pk. Uh, good luck. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eunice, for such a valuable uh, session in which you highlighted different components of reading and shared some amazing activities that can help English and English teachers to teach, English, uh, teach uh, reading more effectively. If you have comments, questions, and or suggestions, please write to us on eteacher.evolution.com.pk. Until then, we wish you happy teaching and happy learning.